what is going on everybody is alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be rocking it out with a seven round seattle seahawks mock draft and with the amazing news that russell wilson wants to sign an extended deal here we finally don't have to worry about going after a quarterback hallelujah because there are some huge needs on this team but if you guys love the seahawks if you guys love the nfl draft kind of the reason why you're here Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, join the community because I make content like this almost every single day. So without further ado, let's kick this off by looking at the contract situation. So when looking at the roster, let's just start out the wide receiver position. Makes it easier. Uh, we're pretty much set, all right? Tyler Lockett, I'm not 100% in support of this given how Dwayne or DK and Metcalf is about to need a contract, but we have a 29-year-old, a four-year extension. Again, not a big fan of giving someone who's 29 a four-year extension. But Tyler Lockett has been a very solid ad, uh, contributor to this team for many, many years. He's a very underrated wide receiver. Uh, he has these hot spurts where people start thinking he's one of the best, and then he dies off, and then people just, for some reason, throw him out. So I think it's like right there in the middle. He's a very consistent, very solid wide receiver, very good to have on your team when you have guys like DK Metcalf who are able to stretch the field as well. A nasty duo. And one of my favorite guys from the last draft, Dwayne Eskridge. He hasn't really had his chance to try to really shine yet, but he does a pretty damn good job in the run game. PFF gave him 84.0 grade there. And honestly, I think that as he gets more comfortable and acclimated into the system, when he stops competing with Freddie Swain as much and gets some more starting reps, I think you'll start to see why I had a first round grade on him. He is a phenomenal wide receiver. Big fan of the pick too. Uh, looking at the quarterback situation, we already talked about it. Five, four, three, two. We, we, I mean, we talked about Russell Wilson here, right? So hopefully that's going to be an extended deal, even though it already is till 2024 with a no trade clause. But also I just want to highlight this Jacob Eason and Geno Smith are on the roster. Geno Smith up this year, but that's an excellent spot for Jacob Eason to go former Washington quarterback. So staying home there in Seattle, good for him. Honestly, it's an amazing backup plan an amazing future option in case Russell Wilson gets hurt or something like that. So cheers to that running back wise, you know, Rashad Penny might get an extension. I'm not sure starting to come on a little bit, starting to get comfortable in the NFL. He was one of my favorite backs that draft. He was, I think he might've been my running back too. So it's just been a while since that draft happened, but finally starting to come into his own DJ Dallas, one of my favorite running backs from, I believe the 2020 NFL draft. Again, it's been a quick minute, but he's one of my favorite guys there at the U Travis Homer, another pretty solid dude. And then obviously um, Chris Carson. I don't, I didn't understand. I didn't see his name. I thought it was like Chris Carson as Christopher. I was like, Ooh, there you go. But yeah, Chris Carson, another pretty damn solid threat. When they got him on a two year deal, that was five mil a year. I was like, yeah, that's a good deal. Um, then this is a position I want to focus on the tight end position. So I know that we got Gerald Everett in the off season, right? And that was a really good pickup. I think he's been producing pretty well so far for the team inconsistent, but still there. And Will Disley hasn't been doing too hot this year either. Uh, these injuries has kind of riddled this guy's career. He has these very big flash moments, but then kind of dies off and then represent Oaks Christian Colby Parkinson. Good guy. Just again, really thin, and he needs to be schemed into the uh, into the offense rather than just him acclimating to it. Just it's going to be a weird thing trying to see him become more of a primary target. So we're probably going to target tight end there. But this is the big issue: is the offensive line. Stone Forsythe played 19 snaps, and he actually did a pretty damn good job. So very happy about that. He was a second to third rounder on my board. Thought he was quite solid as a left tackle and. My comp for him was Ty Insecki, which is a perfect swing tackle. Didn't really think he was starter grade, but he was definitely really good as someone to rotate in. Brandon Shell, Jamarco Jones, guys who have not been playing very well this year. And what's even better, you don't have to pay them anymore because they're gone. So, yeah, we need to definitely focus on that because it's not looking too hot for us. Dwayne Brown up on his last year of his contract, too, and coming close to the end of his time in the NFL. So I think that, that it would be a good time to look at a succession plan. Fortunately, we do not have much of a luxury in the first round where we should have a pick, but that's okay because we'll talk about that in a second. Guard-wise, 
you know, Gabe Jackson and Damian Lewis have not been playing too hot this year. Uh, both of them have been pretty terrible in the past pro, Damian Lewis especially. He has some in the 40s. Uh, same thing with Ethan Pochich. Uh, I, I definitely butchered that name, right? And um, the other center here, I just clicked on John Reed, didn't I? Nope. Kyle Fuller as well has been absolutely terrible. So the offensive line play has not been good at all. I think Damian Lewis can get back to his form the year before, but that is far from something I'm comfortable saying is a guarantee. And Gabe Jackson, at his age, when he's not performing at an extremely high level, that scares the living hell out of me. So I'm a bit worried right now. I would say getting a center guard and tackle is not out of the question for this draft. Let's check out the defense really quick. And that starts out with the safety position. Jamal Adams, he's not the guy who we obviously traded two firsts for, right? But as a situational pass rusher, I think he'll be pretty solid. You know, you can use him as more of that box safety. And that's exactly what he was designed to play anyways. Doing pretty terribly in coverage, unfortunately. He just, he's not the same guy that we all thought he could be. Quandre Diggs, unfortunately, he's up for a contract. I don't know if we bring him back. But Marquise Blair, I think he has some potential. Ugo Amadi has been absolute, absolute dog crap this year. Like, he is terrible. Just absolutely terrible. I think he's playing cornerback position right now. Uh, DJ Reed's up for a contract anyways. Pretty sure DJ Reed was a guy from Georgia who I fell in love with. I just remember seeing him pick off inter, uh, pick off balls left, right, and center. Loved him. Oh, no, that was J.R. Reed. Small little anecdote. That was one of the first guys that started making me watch safeties. I loved him. But we might want to look at a defensive back like that. I think that Marquise Blair solidifies it enough for me to feel comfortable missing on it or addressing it in free agency. Kind of counterintuitive. But uh, now looking at the corners, this is where it gets – a little bit messy. Sidney Jones has been fine. Uh, again, he's up for a contract, but I hope that we can extend him. More of that slot corner type. Uh, Trey Brown's been okay. Nothing to write home about. Ryan Neal, not too good. Uh, I, I totally forgot to see you. I, I forgot what, how Bless Juan Austin was doing. Don't know if he's played much this year. John Reed, if I'm not mistaken, actually played pretty well in the game he played, but I think that was, what, 40 snaps or something? And it's just, this team needs help. Guys, this team needs help. You need to boundary corners like left, right, and center. Uh, just you need to get the best value at positions of need because going after best player available and loading up on a position that you already have, probably not the best idea. Uh, look at the linebackers before we go on the defensive front. Uh, Tanner Muse, okay, let's just forget about him. Jordan Brooks, honestly, if, it, if you discount coverage, he's been doing actually really well. Just needs to continue developing that. Of course, you got Bobby Wagner here, who is a king. I love Bobby. And the fact that he's 31 starts making me feel a little bit sad because I remember getting him in Madden when he was 27 years old. And it's like, ooh, I got a guy who's going to be close to 99 and he's going to be already 27. Like, like, I got some years left on this guy. I hope he can last for another five, six years because he is a stud even at 31 years of age. Uh, ben Burkirvin, you know, Cody Barton. These are guys who are situational and – Unfortunately, it's not a position I think we can address this draft. It's, I mean, that's, I guess, a positive thing. It's not as bad as other positions are, but this roster needs some help. This roster definitely needs some help, but we will help it. We will. Then we got the got defensive line here. Alton Robinson, okay. Daryl Taylor's been playing horribly. Benson Mayoa, I think he has like 20 pressures on the year. Collier, mm, you know, Dunlap's the saving grace of this team. You guys need to do everything you can to make sure he's there. Good trade to get Carlos Dunlap on your team. Uh, he definitely is the one thing keeping this defensive front intact. So uh, getting another defensive end is another thing I'm probably going to target. Puna Ford doing all right. You know, he's there for another year. That's a good thing. But, man, we're, we're getting pretty thin on the defensive front as well. Hopefully a lot of these DNs can help out on that interior. But that is going to be the roster. Let's kick into this draft. Let's have some fun. All right. So let's start the draft. And if you guys are new, we do not do trades because one, it complicates everything to a point where I'm not really in the mood for that. But two, I will never get the same trades twice. And also sometimes the trades are just outlandishly stupid. Like they will offer me um, a fourth round pick at like 105 and a next year fifth for me to trade up from my fifth round pick to it. Like that, that makes no sense. Should be the exact opposite. It should be two fifths to move up into that fourth round position, but 
regardless, we should be coming up soon. Yes, we're at pick 41. We'll see who's here. Of course, N'Kobe Dean is falling. That's going to kill me if he's there. Don't do it. For the love of God, take N'Kobe Dean. Please. We're not taking N'Kobe Dean. We're not. It's not fair to N'Kobe Dean for one. But two, it's not even a position where I'd even target. Oh, it's so good, though. We can't do it. Um, but looking at the positions of need, tackle, you got Bernard Raymond here. Very solid. Max Mitchell as well. Both very solid talents here. I actually have Max Mitchell above Bernard Raymond, but I also recognize Bernard Raymond's been playing tackle for two years, and he's doing it at a very high level. So good for him. Edge rusher-wise, I this is – I mean, we all know how TDN's draft board is going to do. Also, this draft's deep as hell, so we can definitely wait on that. I think the biggest issue is corner, though. I do. I do. And whether it's Martin Emerson or Trent McDuffie, I think we need to get somebody to lock it down. And Trent McDuffie, he is from Washington, but I don't feel like he would fit the scheme as well as Martin Emerson. I like the aggressiveness that Emerson brings. He feels a little bit more Richard Sherman-esque than Trent McDuffie, who I have a later second on. So... We'll see how it develops. Obviously, I think that is the smartest move for us. The offensive line is something you might want to go to free agency for. Because, again, thrusting rookies into action is going to be probably not the best case scenario. And your secondary is terrible enough where you don't have anybody in the back to be able to help you out. So you can just basically get as much help as you can right there. I'm praying uh, we got Max Mitchell here. That's amazing. So getting Max Mitchell at this spot is an absolute steal. Guy's really good in the run game as well. Just again, Louisiana Raging Cajuns. They know what the hell they're doing there. And I think that that value is incredible. Tyler Smith's another guy I'd look at, but with the fact that the guards are already on contract till 2024, that's going to be more of a luxury pick for me than anything. Honestly, if I can get, like, if I were to accept that trade, I'd go Tyler Smith in a heartbeat. Say, okay, we're going to test you out at left tackle. And we'll just rotate. We'll roll away from you because he has some issues at in terms of his mobility. But as a guard, he's my number 31 player in the draft. I love Tyler Smith. You guys should definitely check him out. But if he falls to us, we will take him. Just a heads up. I love my boy Tyler Smith. Thank you for taking him. Oh, my goodness. I was like, duh. Oh, you bastards. Oh, I was about to take Thayer Mumford to play uh, guard slash left tackle. Well, that ruins it. But... We do need center still. Alec Lindstrom's on the board, and I am not going to continue drafting Jarrett Patterson. Already happened twice for this division. So Alec Lindstrom definitely on the quick list to be drafted. Sam Williams here, D'Angelo Malone. Um, I think Boye Mafia is going to be a little bit more fun for this team. Even though I already drafted him once, I think that's a little bit more realistic, and I'm tired of drafting Sam Williams as well. You look at dear defensive line, Haskell Garrett's the only guy I could see being draftable at this point. I like at this spot. So for that, we are actually going to be going Alec Lindstrom out of Boston College. Again, you have both your centers on contract here. So that is definitely something I want to do. And number 109. Ooh. So I wasn't expecting to be here. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, this might be Sam Laporta. Honestly, our tight end situation is pretty terrible. And Sam Laporta's looking to me like a day two guy. A very athletic Iowa tight end. We, we all know Iowa tight end, right? Uh, and again, we can wait for an edge rusher or get in free agency because so far, Carlos Dunlap is the one thing we did right on this defense, and that's something we did in free agency. So we're going to go with Sam Laporta here. I've never drafted him, and I love this guy. Sam Laporta definitely on my list. He's surprised me big time. So check him out and give him some love because honestly, he's not getting talked about at all, and it's Really disrespectful. If Mikhail Wright somehow falls to our next position, which he already didn't, we we're going to take him. We definitely need more than one corner and getting somebody. I know there's some good guys who we can pick up in the seventh, thanks to the TDN predictive board. But honestly, I might do it with their own rankings. It'll be quite fun to totally change up the draft board, but we'll see how that goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, too bad Jermaine Waller just went off the board because I'd consider him at this point. Cam Taylor Britt is someone I need to mention as well. Very solid, very, very, very solid cornerback. So someone who I'm going to consider here as well, you know, six foot, 205 pounds, good base for him. I think edge is more important and we're going to get Boye Moffey out of Minnesota, just a hyper athlete. Oshawn Mathis might've been just the better pick though, just for the team. Cause again, you guys do like TCU edge rushers. It does fit with 
your past and it's not someone I've ever really taken in one of these. We'll, we'll do that maybe next time when we redo it just for fun. But if I were in the draft seat, I'm pulling the trigger on Boye Mafe 10 out of 10 right there. He is a third rounder to me, hyper athlete. He was on the Felsman freaks list. And the guy is like a sub four, six forty with a 41 inch vertical. It's like, hello. Like he's ridiculous. He's probably going to go in like that early third round just because of that. But he also like, he, he's hyper raw. So if you put him with somebody like Nick Bosa, since I drafted him to the Niners, I believe then, or Carlos Dunlap, you can really get yourself a superstar at that position. So let's see what happens. We'll see what happens. We've already gotten our guard slash center hybrid when Alec Lindstrom already gone true right tackle. So we could go after a left tackle as well. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Of course, in TDN fashion, there's dudes on here who have said that they're not going to declare for the draft. So that's great. But, oh, don't do this to me. Thank you. Eric Gray is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's a second round running back for me. That guy's talented as all get go. I don't really think any of these tackles are good enough. I think that if you continue developing Stone Forsythe, he could probably start for you. I, I do like him actually quite a bit. Yeah, I'm not not really a huge fan of what's on the board right at the moment. I would potentially trade down if I were in this position. But looking at the corners on the board, Taiwan Mullen does kind of feel a little bit like uh, Seahawk, but I have a weird feeling he'll return. I do. Um, Riley Moss, somebody who I haven't actually taken that much. Uh, he like The problem is these guys declare for the draft or say that they're going to be staying like every other hour of the day. So the moment I say this, I'm probably already outdated on some of these dudes saying that they're going to be returning. But I think Riley Moss wouldn't be a bad idea. We're going to do it. We're going to do Riley Moss. Uh, he's one of the guys who I am a pretty big fan of, hyper athlete and a very good pick machine. So that's pretty much what you're getting in the seventh round. It's a lot better than Ugo Amadi, right? You got to do everything you can to make sure that this team gets as good of a draft as possible. Have you guys, did you guys see that North Dakota tackles name? Matt Walletsko. That's so cool. Never, I haven't heard of that guy yet. So caught me off guard, but that I think is our last pick of the draft guys. So we'll go over it and then I'll be telling y'all to see you later, but let's see who the last picks are. We don't even get to see the last pick. That's wonderful. But in this draft, we got in a starting cornerback and honestly, you could have gotten your top two corners because you know, Trey Brown was a seventh round pick too. Uh, you got Max Mitchell. So a starting right tackle for you as well as a starting center, you got your starting tight end. And then honestly, a starting edge rusher. Like, I think all these guys might have been starters. They might be starters for your team, especially given how many people get a ton of snaps on the roster. So let me know what you guys think. I thought that this was honestly a kick-ass draft. It's quite fun for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys on the far side. Peace.